Buenos dias. Mm. All right. Let's see if we got all the stuff right. Eat the mic. You have to eat it. Just put little candy bits on it. You can eat it. Well, you probably lick it or something creepy. Okay. Who do we got? We have Unsung, Gordon Bennett. Hello. Good to see everybody. Uh, Biotech Breakout. Dobry utra, kak dila? Izmašto si Todd, good to see you. Barno, Vincent, what up? Dubai money, nice turtle there. I have so many turtles. Luckily, they're going to all be used to make trippies. So that's good. Nara, what up? Poop and Tony, Demayan, Vincent, yeah. Some some not negative crypto news coming out of India. That's good. Usually negative coming out of there. They, they can't find their, their ass with both hands. Uh... Michael Murphy, good to see you. Tiffany, what's going on? I get that a lot. Breakfast leadership. Alan, what up? What up? Johnny Midas, where is it? From the desert. Jeez, this guy doesn't ever live in one spot. Joe Pirate. Uh, also, Biotech Breakout, Gordon Bennett, CC Brown over on Theta. And, uh, well, we're also going out, or we should be going out to Trading TV. At some point, that's going to become more important. Um, they're rolling out a bunch of really cool stuff there. So as they become more robust, we will be uh, doing more stuff with them, more and more. All right. Uh, hello, Belinda. Hello, Rod. What's going on? Cyan Ablaze. Blue Blaze. Blue Blaze? Blue Ablaze. Uh, Amy, nephew, what up? Jimmy James, Joe C, Suze, Adam. What's going on, Adam? Audrey. Tim, Sylvia, tube that pipeline. Tim, Tim too. Not any, not a lesser Tim, mind you. Another Tim. There can be more than one Tim. Uh, Bitcoin candy. Art chick. Joe Fernandez, ¿cómo estás? Yo espero que todo está bien. Jim. All right, cool. Uh, City Medianco, good to see you over in Theta. All right, I think that's about it. So we're going to talk about Cardano increasing their block size by 11%. Uh, so I have a cool little article that we'll just, uh, you know, run through that really quickly. That's good. Um, they're continuing to do uh, these these upgrades and, and approaching Basho. That's the new uh, or or the, the kind of the third phase of deployment of all the software upgrades, things like that for Cardano and Plutus and all this kind of cool stuff. So we'll talk about that a little bit. We will talk about the Bitwise spot ETF and what that's going to look like. So that's kind of fun. We will... Um, talk about what might be a good entry point. JJ, what's up? What might be a good entry point for those of you that are trying to find an entry point for looks token, or at least try to explain it a little bit better so that people understand what it is and how it's kind of a, a merger of a bunch of really cool trends right now. And maybe that makes sense and maybe it doesn't. So it might be the cool way to play the NFT space. If you don't want to become a DGN and buy specific NFTs, uh, yeah, uh, algo staking rewards changing. Well, that'll be curious. They better do something good. I hope they're doing something good because right now uh, staking Algorand is worthless. And I mean worthless, like you can't look, if you're looking at all these protocols and you look at what Cosmos pays, and you look at what Cardano pays, you look at what, I mean, go down the list. Look at what all these assets pay. And, or, or like looks tokens paying like 500%. You look at all this kind of stuff and then you go Algorand. Oh, you make like, you make like dust. You make dust. I don't know, man. And Gordon, uh, yeah, you can lend Algorand, but that's a little bit. Ooh, you got to have a thick stomach for that. So anyway, I hope that they change that for the better. We'll see. They Algorand has always had cool tech. They just have really poor communication. Kind of like, kind of like Polkadot. Poor, poor, poor communication and terrible branding. Polka dot. It's pretty stupid. Um, I think they botched it on the, the marketing, and I think they botched it on the communication strategy, and I hope they're not too late. But I don't hear people talking about building, like building a lot of stuff out on polka dot. Maybe they are, but you don't hear about it. If you don't hear about it, it's like it's not happening. Um so, oh, they're going to go 4% rewards are going to be paid. Oh, on Coinbase. Well, you don't care about Coinbase, Todd, because 
Coinbase is not anything. Coinbase is doing their own thing. And they're doing that so they don't have to pay you as much so that they get the iterative, uh, the, the iterative compounding interest and you do not. So if that's Coinbase doing it, we don't care. If that's Algorand doing it, then I would be less interested in Algorand because it's dead money. And uh, they don't seem to be able to communicate. They don't seem to be able to have any public outreach. They don't seem to have anything very new and exciting. They don't seem to have anything at all more interesting other than their certificate system than, than Cardano, which is not more interesting. So I'm not sure other than the fact that it's not expensive. Not expensive is not a reason to buy something. Undervalued is a reason, but I'm not sure it's undervalued. Everybody's like, oh, everybody's going to use, all the banks are going to use Algorand. Are they? Doesn't appear to be that they are. I don't know, man. We'll see. Um, yeah, Dot's been disappointing. But you own the whole space because if you own the whole space, you won't miss one. And if, and if listen, Algorand could be doing all the wrong things and then do one right thing and the, and the token goes to four bucks. And then you'd be like, Bleh! and then everybody rushes in and pushes it to six where they got 50% and you got 400% because you had an even distribution through the through the protocol layer. So just if you can own them all, you, 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 we might look back in a few years and be like, that was a loss. We chalked it up to a loss, but we got four other winners or two other winners or one other winner that did a 50 or 100x. So I don't think you want to abandon it, but it definitely doesn't make me want to rebalance into it. Crypto Gamer, what's up? All set. Good to see you. Okay. So we'll go to our fine non-commercial, commercial, non-commercial non breaks. And then we will return and then we will get into it. And I'll leave you with our, our cool little stick. This is the full, this one might not even exist in nature. <laughs> um, and the, uh, let's see, Crypto Bunny, uh, let's see. Uh, El Paul, good to see you. Bunny, good to see you. Uh, let's see, and Dots, Parachain, Crowd Loans, and Airdrops from these. Also been cool. Yeah, I mean, I haven't been messing with any of that. Uh, let's see. Close off. Good to see you. All set. Good to see you. Uh, and, and real quick, I had to pay $80 to get my look staked on the protocol. Well, it's not really staked on the protocol, so to speak. It's not a protocol. This is just a funny money token, and this is their way of kind of rewarding users. So it's not staking in the traditional sense. They call it staking, but you're not really doing anything other than, other than reinvesting their funny money token. Let's be honest about it. It's not the looks token has it has perceived value, but it'd be really tough to create some kind of intrinsic value argument because it's just what do we believe is the value of holding a token that they they printed out of thin air? But then the intrinsic value argument becomes what they pay in terms of Ethereum per token per day. That becomes an at least right now if that's a if that's a metric that you can measure and quantify. Then, then there's an intrinsic value argument to having the looks token as to be an Ethereum miner. So we will, we will, we, we it remains to be seen. Uh, Santander, what's up? Okay, so let's do this. Uh, Crypto Fanatico, what's up, Phil? And now that Phil's here and not, and hopefully not driving into oncoming traffic, we will go uh, for just a moment and do our non commercial break and then we will be right back. But anyway, yeah, this is our trippy stick. The sticks are coming. We're just trying to make sure that we do this in a way that's not quite so degenerate. And that would be a full, the full trippy gear. That, that's the whole, there's no, I don't even think this guy would exist in real life because I don't know if, I don't know how many thousands of these would have to be minted for that combination to appear altogether. The shoes, the shorts, the bandana, the hat, like, so we Brandon and I were actually talking about that, the, the impossibility of some of these. And that's the cool thing about the randomness. None of us know what is coming next. That's kind of interesting. So we have we have narrowed down a few things. We will probably be doing a Dutch auction, which meaning uh will the price, the price curve will be in reverse. So instead of punishing people for coming late, essentially it will it will get a little bit less expensive, not much, but a little bit less expensive to join later on. I don't want people to feel like they got left behind. But on the other side of it, uh, it pays to be a winner. So the early people in sticks are going to get the uh, our fake our FUSD, our fake stablecoin, um, a million each. Everyone's going to be a fake USD millionaire. Uh, all the early participants. Also, there's some other cool stuff we're going to do. Um, 
but it's a bit, it looks right now that it's going to be an eight to 10 week long reveal. So you will start with your stick and every week a new trait may or may not appear because you might not have all 10 traits, right? Like, like in board apes, the less traits, the more valuable. So you might have a week where you don't get a trait, which is actually more valuable than one where you do. It's, it's very interesting. So that could be kind of fun. Anyway, we'll see how this all goes, but we're looking for maybe, maybe the end of this month. We'll see. So, yeah. Anyway, we will be uh, right back. Wah, wah, wah. Let's go back to our cool. Let's go back to our like, little cool music. Yeah, that's cool. It's a little cool music. Okay, let's do a quick rundown of Los Precios. Let's see what's going on. If you have a question, um, please write the word question real quick. Uh, easy, good to see you. Seb the Fool, welcome. Uh, Plu, good to see you. Bobby, Pablo, all the cool kids. Uh, yeah, we don't know. Hopefully, hopefully this month, there's just some little bits I've got to work out. Like we're, we're trying to do this all among our own team. I'm not like hiring from the outside. So it's all of us kind of like working together on it, which means we're setting, we got to set up a discord. We need a web developer to do some basic stuff because I am not those things. So yeah, that's, uh, that's and you don't you know I don't like to put the like ask for people to just throw in and help because that's only going to go so far. All right? I don't want people that are like, "Yeah, I'd love to help out." Like I have people email me all the time, "Hey man, can I I want to be an intern." I'm like, "Intern what? I'm nothing to intern unless you move neurons around." I don't know what to tell you. So, maybe with the sticks project we'll have some interns if they want to be kind of underneath like launching a project, but it's a shoestring we don't expect it to sell out. We're not selling a bunch of pieces. We're only doing uh, 4,900 pieces, 49.99. So yeah, it's not going to be like, this isn't a, a big old fat ass cash grab. That's other stuff. Okay. Um, let's see. Let's <laughs> BTC needs to get packed to 42 K so I can pay some bills without losing such a chunk of my, um, listen, if you're investing in the crypto space, and you need that money to do other things, then don't invest in the crypto space. Um, don't be putting money in here that you're using for paying rent or paying off credit cards, things like that. You know, the best thing you can do to generate wealth, get out of debt. Just get out of debt. Um, so, yeah, we'll see. Okay, um, let us move forward. Uh, let's see, shot, uh, shot AO, good to see you. And Nick, how much do you think sticks will start? So we're looking at doing, I know this is a sidetrack, but we're looking at doing a Dutch auction. Um, and let me just, just for, see if, do I have the other one up there? Oh yeah, that's the one. That If I was going to just go out and hunt one, I would go hunt that one. So we're looking at doing a Dutch auction, probably starting at 0.2 and going down to uh, like 0.2 ETH, 0.15, 0.1 and probably spread that, distribute that through the whole 4,999. Um, so like a third, a third, a third. That way people don't feel like, oh man, somebody came in first and whatever. We're not going to have that. And and, we, and Brandon and I have talked about this. The way it's going to work is that the the sticks get you access to, because we, we ideally want to discourage people from flipping these things. I mean, it's going to happen a little bit, but we really don't care about the price of these. Essentially, what these are is access to a bunch of training, uh, kind of training content we'll do and like private classes and stuff. And so you have a stick. Cool. You can get into the Discord. That's your entry into the Discord. You, once you're in the Discord, we'll have a bunch of like all the videos, like all the options stuff I do and all those kind of, that'll all be just free content for people. So it'll be a lot of cool little educational content. I've got some cool blog writers that I've been working with that have some really cool content. They're more macro guys. They're going to be contributing. I'm going to be putting 
a lot of connections over to some game theory, educational stuff, all that kind of. So I really want to make it a spot where you could come spend a couple of months. And that way, because look, like I charge a lot of my clients like, well, not like, I charge them 800 bucks an hour for consulting. And while that works for a lot of people, especially people just trying to polish up a, a, a portfolio or something, for a lot of people an, in an hour, they don't kind of absorb. And so it might make more sense if you just had like a pass to get into a library of content. And then if you had questions, you could post those questions in the Discord. So we want kind of a safe place. You know, like an example, the Discord will never, ever contact you. It will never, ever do like spammy stuff like that. So we're trying to learn from a lot of the mistakes that these other platforms have made, but this is not a flip token. Um, so it's going to, we're going to Dutch auction it. It'll be reverse. Uh, and the, the people that are in that first tier will get uh, a million FUSD. And then we'll be using that stable coin to, to do a bunch of cool, like, educational stuff where you're not risking your money you're risking the, the money that i just gave you to do like a yield farming and versions of kind of like uh, uh futures and all this kind of stuff all the kind of stuff where you would put your money in and probably get blown up like DeFi stuff will simulate a lot of that stuff so you can see how it would work without losing money ideally you would come out of this with a cool pfp and not and not lose money in in other areas of your life <laughs> the, the Hawaiians uh, style sticks as a blunt. Yeah, we don't have any high ones. Um, we, we're trying to stay so much away from the drugs, but you can only so much, right? Okay, let's take a quick look at markets. There's not really a lot of excitement going on. The markets were kind of up yesterday, and they are kind of down today. As you can see, if you back out Bitcoin's down by 4.3, everything else looks quiet, doesn't it? So if you say a negative 4.3 is zero, right? You 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 not you reel it out. Um, so nominal. So you're you're down what 0.1. So basically, Bitcoin's down four and a half percent. Everything else is flat. Flat. Uh, Cardano is up. Dot is up comparatively. Sheeb oddly up. Uh, and the only reason I track it is because they're going to be doing a lot of NFT stuff, and because they're going to be getting into NFTs, we do want to kind of watch what they're doing to see. Um, how that looks. Sebastian, good to see you. Uh, also, uh, Nicole, good to see you, Nicole. Um, Tim, can you touch on selling, setting stop losses? Uh, I don't mess with stop losses in crypto because I'm a value investor. I'm not trading, but I can tell you. Um, so for those of you that don't know what a stop loss is, essentially you can do trailing losses and you can do stop losses. So let's say your XYZ asset hits four bucks and you say, man, I don't want to, I don't want to lose money if it goes down. So I could set a stop loss at three bucks and 75 cents. So it doesn't matter where it goes, but if it comes down and pops 375, I sell out. That's a way to lock in profit. Sometimes in volatile assets, it's a way to get left behind. Mostly it's a way to get left behind. So I'd be careful of that. What you might want to do is trailing. And again, I don't advocate trading in general. Traders always lose in the long run. It just is what it is, especially in an expanding space like this that can be rather logarithmic. You don't want to get, you know, don't be confused when the near-term price action starts to dictate what you think the long-term, um, you know, like propagation of the asset, use utility, adoption, and all that is. You can, you can fool yourself. Humans are really good at finding patterns where they don't actually exist, right? So you see the price, like Bitcoin right now. 30, 34,000 to, to 38,000, 39,000. So if it got to 41 or 42,000, you might be like, I got to sell out. Cool, except that almost every time you would have done that in the past, you would have lost a move to 50, 55, 60, 65, or almost 70,000. And two years ago in 2020, people were like, oh man, you know, the uh, Bitcoin price, the high is 20. So if it gets to 20, I'm out. Well, didn't go back down to 20 since it left 20 ever. So at the very bare minimum, you lost like, uh, let's see, uh, 50, 60, almost 70%. You just lost 70% of upside by, by trying to time it. So you could have trailing stops where, for instance, the price is at five. You say, I'm going to do a $1 trailing stop or a percentage-based trailing stop. The asset goes up. And when it comes down by that percentage or that amount, 
of trail you set. You might say 25 cents. It goes up to 550. It comes back down and at five and a quarter, it sells out. You say, okay, cool. But again, you, you risk losing the big upside. These are very volatile assets. Remember, these are illiquid assets on illiquid exchanges traded by sketchy people and mostly, I don't say ignorant, but but very, very junior or novice investors that that don't employ game theory, that don't have long-term vision. They're just here. They're just they're just kind of meme spammy, and, and they just they found themselves in the crypto space. Luckily, most of those are being hoovered out into the NFT space where there's even less c- kind of cognitive behavior, unless you count cognitive bias. Scorpion, buddy, good to see you. Uh, Bunker God, what up? Alex Veron, what up? Um, so, yeah, I mean, I, I'm not a fan of of them in crypto, um, and I, I'm not a fan of them generally because I think you'll miss you'll miss a lot of what uh, the crypto space it can do in a very quick way. So, be careful. Sorry, to answer this question. Um, will a stick get access to your Udemy? Yeah, I'm gonna put all of that. Um, all of the Udemy stuff, like, so that's a way you could look at it too. Is it just a cheaper way to get the options? If that's all you care about, that would, that would be another way to get it. And we're going to be doing, um, an options kind of, uh, like classes type thing, a little bit more hands-on. I expect that the, that the group that's in sticks, well, we know it can only be so many people, right? We're not making more sticks. There's the, there's the amount that there is. I think we can manage about about 5,000 people because any one time you can have 20 people here, 30 people there, right? It's not going to be like trillions of people. So I think we can manage a small amount of people and and continue to educate. But yeah, the options course will be part of that kind of library of of content. Anything that we think is valuable, like the, um, the, the game theory discussion that we used to have where we do one game theory topic a day, um, that's actually in a PDF. So I'm going to like read through that game theory and make all those little videos because why not? Right. That's, that's sometimes you can absorb just a little chunk rather than like hours of content. If you had five minutes, six minutes, three minutes, and you wanted to just hoover something into your brain box, that might be a cool way to do it. Um, let's see. Can you break down in some detail, the definitions and difference between use utility and adoption is there seems to be some crossover. Well, there, there is kind of crossover, but a way you can think of it is okay. Utility Think of utility as this. Does this thing have utility? It doesn't mean people are using it, but like a hammer. Does a hammer have utility? Yes, it has utility. You could see where having a hammer makes a lot of sense. Okay, cool. So this hammer has utility. It can hammer nails. It can really, it can smash all sorts of things. It can smash windows. It can smash robbers. It can smash basically anything that you want to smash. A hammer is a good way to get it done. It's well-balanced implement of death and destruction, or it can be constructive, right? Um, so that's that's utility use okay uh, is this thing has utility but can i use it can i actually get the utility out of it cannot like if i can grab it how much education do i need to actually use it and how much education do other people need to start using it so is it kind of easy to use use if something has utility and it's clear that it has utility then use tends to – use bleeds into adoption, doesn't it? Because as more people see you using it, me using it, him using it, and they go, oh, I, why, what are you using that for? Oh, I'm, I use it for hammers. Oh, that's a cool use. That's a cool use case for that, for that tool that seems to have a fair amount of utility. Yeah, get you one, bro. Get a hammer. Oh, I like this hammer. And then the adoption cycle starts and more and more people go, man, I want to get one of those hammers. You see what you can use it for? So there can be many uses. There can, there can be, you know, utility is different to each person, but this gives you an idea. And, and if you have something that has utility and it starts to pick up use, it can become adopted on a grand scale. And then in, in adoption, then you can start looking at, at things like, um, you know, these, these various uh, adoption curves and stuff like that, that that show you just on the aggregate what how people pile into certain um, trends and, and how that can grow in, in a logarithmic or semi-logarithmic way. So that's kind of cool. That's the best way I can kind of keep it simple. You can – a lot of these things do kind of cross over. Um, but as a general rule, you need to be – you should probably be looking for that kind of idea bet- between use, utility, and adoption. Hopefully it, it – it, in, that would increase to a certain point. I mean, obviously, 
the adoption of anything would only be the amount of humans to the amount of use specific use cases, right? Like there's only so many humans. You're 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 not likely to sell more widgets than than there are humans unless part of its utility is that each human should have more than one. And then you start to wonder if that couldn't be two different widgets. So yeah, you can, you can go down the rabbit hole there. Nesh, good to see you. All right. Uh, who, let me just make sure on these shows. I like to make sure we do some good kind of Q and a, uh, JR, what's up, man, Pablo, what do you got? Uh, Nick, some, um, something we used to do last year show was portfolio breakdown. Could we bring that back someday? I can give you a basic one. Why don't we, a good one give me a second to let this load up i like this sketch pad thing it's just sometimes it gets bigger than the screen too quickly let me see i can get it in a way where expand you son of a gun okay that's not bad get rid of this guy okay let me know if you guys can see this and uh, oh let me get let me pop that okay that should give you that let me do one quick little, yay. Okay, this this should give you kind of an idea. So this is our, our 2022 starter kit. So portfolio construction, if, if there is any one piece, mm, one slide, one chunk of information that, that might make sense for you, for you to write down, it probably could be this one. Um, th this is probably just, a, and again, your numbers can be a little bit different. Everybody's numbers might be a little bit different, but this gives you a good starting point. Uh, and I'm going to go, uh, Queen J, good to see you. Uh, okay, I think we got everybody. All right, let us carry on. Um, uh, what does minting NFT mean? Okay, um, that's a, a, Brenda, that is a robust question with many answers. We will we will attempt to solve that in a, in a bit. Okay, portfolio construction. This is in the crypto space. Right now, we're not considering NFTs as as part of a portfolio other than we would probably keep it in the dApps slash lottery tickets space because there is uh, definitely a lot of interest in the non-fungible token space, but you're, you're, you shouldn't be looking at NFTs as a place to invest unless it's a picks and shovels play. Invest in a platform that sells NFTs, right? Invest in a project. If you could get somehow underneath a project that mints NFTs, but remember, very illiquid. N NFTs are incredibly illiquid. Um, so just be very careful. Okay. So portfolio construction. Um, this is the way that I do it. You got to do you, but but this is the way that I do it. Um, so my portfolio construction is uh, protocols and layer one, 25 to 50%. I can tell you right now, that's that's a lot closer to 50%. And after Cardano and, and Dot took off, it got even a lot more, like uh, higher than, you know. So anyway, but I try to balance about 50% protocols. Um, now, if you're in DeFi, where does that fit in? In my opinion, DeFi falls under the stablecoin kind of area where ideally – if you're defying it, you're not in. You're not doing these DeFi platforms that shower you with funny money tokens. You're probably looking for some kind of yield farming and and some kind of uh, you know arbitrage through uh, stable coins. But that said, there's just too many ways to lose money in DeFi. I I still don't think that that's where you you put currency units if you want to keep currency units. My opinion. Trough mob, what's up? Okay, uh, so. Is AI part of dApps? Well, AI is a tricky one because right now we don't have any protocol AI. We do have AI that runs on top of protocols. So it's starting to form its own little section. But let me go through the list and then I'll show you probably where I would put AI. I might say in the kind of yeah, it's kind of a dap, isn't it? I mean, these are daps. These are these are laid on top of protocols and they're not and then they're not assistance layers. So, right now we don't have any, you know, we could. I mean, there there could be a future where Singularity Net um works with like say Cardano and they create some kind of um hyper, uh, you know, um you know, a weighted labeled hypergraph like graph-based protocol kind of graph-based chip mechanism i don't know you know um they, they do talk about um graph chips things like that so maybe maybe that's but that's probably 
kind of far into the future where there would be a protocol. I think you'd see AI companies still leveraging um, the protocol of choice for them, which would, which right now is either Cosmos or Cardano. Okay. So protocols, layer ones. And what are those protocols? So that's going to put us with uh, Ethereum, Cardano, Polkadot, Cosmos, Near, Algorand, um, Avalanche, things like that. And so these are the underlying, think of these as the highways and the railways, right? Where Web3 and, and whatever comes after that will be built on top of it. And what gets built on top of that is either an assistance layer, which you could call a 1.5 or a layer or a second, a layer two, right? It kind of the same thing. And then, and that would be things like one or Matic. And they would, they would sit on top of those protocols, right? And that would create hopefully a robust environment for developers to release dApps, which are more public facing, decentralized applications, marginally decentralized. Nothing, there's not really true decentralization, but, but as close as we can get. So that's, that's the layer one and layer two store of value. That's going to be Bitcoin. And I don't even think stable coins are store of value because you're not storing your value in us dollars. You're getting, you're getting massacred. Um, but so store of value to me is Bitcoin. I don't know any other good store of value and I don't, I'm not sure there is one. What would it be 10 years ago? It probably the argument would have been gold. But I think it's a poor argument because gold has never appropriately tracked inflation. And gold is a little bit, you know, the arguments for gold sound good if you're a 69-year-old man who likes to bite his coins and look at them in a safe. But the reality is it's it's not really – you know, transportable, portable, divisible. It doesn't like follow any of the, any of the tenants of what, uh, you know, good sound. It's not money. It's not real. It's not really a store of value. It's not, a, it's not, it's kind of a medium of exchange because gold has a price that's kind of, but it's, it's very difficult to get it into a transportable, portable, divisible, divisible way to do that kind of commerce unless you have coinage. But guess what? If you're at a refinery and you get a bunch of coins in, you melt them because they might be fake. So even there, it's kind of like, it's kind of sketchy. We found, when I was working in the refinery, we had a bunch of um, uh, Chinese um, solid gold, <laughs> solid um, gold rounds, like one ounce rounds, but we drilled through them. It was tungsten. It was tungsten gold with like an eighth ounce of gold. You think that's a lot of gold. Well, yeah, but they're selling one ounce rounds. So you could get eight of those per, right? Because tungsten is very close to the weight and the size that gold is. So we melt everything. We don't take anything for granted. We melt everything. And like acid testing 18 karat gold is almost impossible anyway because uh, st like st stainless steel holds 18 karat acid, nitric acid. So like, anyway, that's some of the some of the scandalous tricks you learn in the gold business. Well, anyway, so... The only store of value right now is Bitcoin. That is it. That is all. Now, you might not like that and you might not want that. That's fine. But this is just the way I do it. Stable coins, I think you want 5 to 10% in stable coin, not USDT. So when I say stable coins, there's nothing stable about Tether other than the, per the perceived price. The people, Bitfinex, Ifinex, uh, pretty much everybody involved in Tether is, is, is a crook is still a crook, is on the run or has been indicted like, hey, I'm not anti-crook. There's some there's some great crooks out there. There's some, you know, Julian Assange technically, you know, oh, he's he's bad, you know, but he's good, right? He's like a he's like an interesting human. It's probably good for humanity that dudes like that exist. So I'm not I'm not anti bad guy. I'm anti these guys. The people at USDT are scumbags. So don't hold USDT. You want to go in and out of it and make a trade? Great. Don't hold it. Because you're very likely to get burned if it if it ever unpegs, and there's some unwind like Terra. I wouldn't touch any Terra stablecoin because <laughs> they're sketchy, and the people they're involved with. Oh, by the way, are sketchy people that came from what was it, Quadriga, the scammy exchange in Canada where the dude disappeared and just died in India, and he's the only one that had the keys to hundreds of millions of dollars. Man, B S. I want this video to live, so I'm gonna be. I'm, I'm not using any profanity today. So anyway, stable coins would be USDC, um, Pax, uh, Paxos, their, their stable coin, uh, whatever that's going to be called. You know what it would not be? It would not be FUSD, which is going to be our stable coin. Our stable coin is worthless, worthless. And I'm going to, we decided we're going to make, 
as many of our stable coin as whatever the national debt is. So I know how many, how many trillions is that? Well, that's what they're making. So if you're good in the discord, I'm going to shower you. I'm going to make you a millionaire of F U S D anyway. I digress. So have some stable coins so that you can take advantage when the market does weird things and there's there's turbulence and you go, oh, I wish I had a little cash. This is a way to have a little cash. And hey, do you want to create a piggy bank? What you might consider doing now, be, be careful because there may be tax implications, but what one might consider doing is taking your staking rewards and converting your staking rewards into stable coin. And yes, there's going to be a tax burden on that, which you and your, your tax preparer will figure out. But having that that slush fund of extra stable coin would allow you to take advantage of little kind of market turbulence and, and perturbations. And it might be, you know, you might thank yourself. Uh, and then, so you, then you have dApps. What are the dApps? Well, the, this is the five to 10% that's going to represent, de, represent decentralized applications. These are on top of the protocols on top of the one and a half assistance layers, like, like graph token on top of the two, the, the, the layer twos, which basically help scale through either opportunistic or, or, or zero knowledge proof and zero, ZK rollups, um, zero knowledge, uh, things like Ethereum, right? So you have Matic and one. So on top of all that, that's buried in the ground, you have your, uh, decentralized applications and lottery tickets. And if you lump those together, lottery tickets are absolute BS garbage, trash compactor stuff that, that, but, but it still might go up. And so that that's going to encompass dApps. You don't know who's going to win, right? Like, it's like, I was talking to my buddy um, this morning. He said, Hey, who's going to win? You know, like which, uh, where should I be buying digital real estate? I said, well, why don't you wait and see what meta does? Because you could go buy sandbox. That might work out for some people. It will, for most, it won't. You could go buy Decentraland, which is garbage. But for some people, that might work out. For most people, it won't. The people that are pumping it really loud bought in early and they're selling it to you. Understand that. Or you wait and see what, you know, face, uh, formerly Meta, formerly Facebook, what Meta does because they have billions of people already entrenched. They've already captured all those people that use Facebook, that use WhatsApp, that use Instagram. Do we ignore that? No, that is not logical. You wait and see what they do. You want to go long metaverse? <sighs> go long Facebook. It, it, it pains me to say it, but that's probably how you do it. Uh, no, I would not buy sand and I would not buy mana. Now, you might. You might say, it might work, Jim. I, I, I was in mana when it was early. I never really... I never really thought that was the final product of what a metaverse build out is going to look like. I think it would probably look more like worlds. Some of you should go take a look at worlds. You get a world like the team over at whitelist XYZ, uh, whitelist NFT dot XYZ. They bought a world. They're building a whole effing world where you can go play around. That's dope. It's super cool. So you, you, matter of fact, you ought to go look at it for anybody that's kind of curious they have – they're like constructing this world where you'll go in. They have like this giant mansion and stuff, and you'll go look around, go through the forest, go through – and you – and they – NFTs are hidden in it, like hidden in the world. It's real cool. Anyway, they bought a world for, I don't know, three or four ETH. You can buy a world. So you, you say, well, I can go buy – I can go buy some land right down the block from P. Diddy's imaginary house in Sandbox so that the 17 other of us can – do what can do what <laughs> like I get it that we're going to be living these virtual and AR environments, but are you going to be in sandbox? Maybe, but maybe you'll probably be in something that Zuckerberg creates. And I, I, I don't think, see flying knee. I don't agree. I don't think you'd ban Zuckerberg. I think if there's not a Zuckerberg, there's probably not, a lot of utility in the metaverse, which is all it really is just a video game environment with social media kind of with with a social interaction kind of cooked in. Where are the best headsets coming out of right right now? And, and remind and let me remind Facebook is meta is the Oculus program, which is the Oculus Quest 2 and the Quest Pro, which is I think called Project Cal is it Cambria or Calibra? Anyway. That's the Quest Pro, which is coming out sometime in 2022. Also, who's getting into the game? Apple. 
So do you think Apple and Meta, formerly Facebook, is a better bet? Or or do you think the money is going to be in Sandbox and Mana and Quagmire World and all this other stuff? I don't know, man. I would not bet against the Titans, right? And not the football team. I would clearly bet against them. But like the Titans in industry. So, yeah. Um, okay. So this is the this is kind of the distribution of the portfolio, the five T's, and that's just something. It's just a way of looking at these tokens. So if you find a token that you believe it has utility, you can see use and use cases, and it's starting to gain, or you think it might gain adoption, then put it through the five T's. Look at the team. Make sure that it's not like a team like XR, like Ripple, right? A bunch of crooks, um, or like Terra, or like Solana, or like Tron, or oh Jesus, you can just keep going. Everybody at Binance. Okay, whew, forget that. Um, technology. Look at the technology and and see if that makes sense, right? Like or that's you, when you look at the technology, then you can kind of put the the use utility and adoption argument against it. Look at the tokenomics. Did they create? 474 quadrillion tokens and you realize this is just a game where people are trying to push decimals over and there's it's it's kind of the opposite do the founders have 900 percent of the tokens and you have like some little dust and they make it look exciting and then they spend them as fast as they can get them like chain link if you go look at the look at the on-chain metrics of chain link and look who's you who's selling the token as fast as possible it's the devs percentage wise they sell more than anyone else you should be worried if the devs are selling everything they got as fast as they get it the second there's an unlock they sell all of it makes me think they don't really believe in the future of Chainlink. when i looked at that i no longer believed in the future chain link and i sold done uh and i'm willing to lose some of the upside to sleep at night so yeah Okay, uh, so then look at the to – so if it passes the team, it looks like cool to uh, technology. The tokenomics makes sense to you. I, I, I really like the tokenomics right now of the looks token, which is why I continue to look at it. Um, look at the timing. Is this solving a problem or is it merging some trends? Maybe, maybe the T, maybe one of the Ts. Maybe it should be six Ts, maybe trends. But I think that goes into timing, right? Timing and trends kind of go together. Why? Because if you can take three or four cool trends, two trends, three trends, and you can merge them together in a product that has a good team, good technology, fair tokenomics, they're solving a real problem. That's the why token question. And then they hand this thing to you and you say, look, this has got, I see utility. I use it. Maybe it will gain adoption. Then you may be onto something. And at least if you've done this, if you have a fair distribution in, in your portfolio, like something like this and you and you have analyzed the the five t's it, you've done as much as you can do other than just ruminating on the asset you've done as much as you can do in in to prepare a portfolio the rest a lot of it is out of your hands well all of it is out of your hands right and so being a value investor you can only do so much don't over obsess don't over analyze don't don't be uh, paralyzed by analysis, tyranny of choice, these kinds of things. Um, you can just cr create some some weak assumptions because there's there's very few strong assumptions. So keep your assumptions. Be be honest with yourself. Assume that you're you know make list your assumptions, whether they're strong or weak. Look at look at the potential. Think eighteen to thirty six months into the future. And I do promise you, if you kind of absorb this system, percentages are yours, but if you absorb this kind of thinking, you're going to notice that on the aggregate, you make better decisions. And that's all you have to do is just make slightly better decisions than your peers because they will pay off over time, right? And you don't have to, none of us here are going to have, here's the reality. None of us here are, are likely, it's not statistically impossible, but it's improbable that we're going to have Elon Musk's paper money. Right. And I say paper because he doesn't Elon doesn't even have Elon money. Right. It's, it's a it's a function of of market cap. But we're very unlikely that anybody listening to my honey laden voice is going to be a hundred billionaire. Or even a 10 billionaire. There may be some billionaires in the bunch. And I hope when you if you hit a billion, you will buy me a steak. Um, but there are probably many, many 
potential millionaires and and what deca millionaires maybe even some centa millionaires in the bunch that's pretty possible over the next 10 years and that's if we if we forget about debasement effects and things like that if we get some debasement you get whew, then the wheels come off but that's a whole other that that gets into macro and let's not go there so Keep, keep that in mind. So this is this would be something that I think might make sense to kind of commit. We're not going to look at any other um, prices. We've pretty much done that. But I do want to show you somewhere where I'm keeping a lot of my interest. So, yeah, the market is pretty much down today. Don't stress about it. doesn't matter. You've had a couple of good days to kind of bounce you back out. I think Nunet is a good is, is a good purchase. Uh, it's in a good range. I think if you missed SDAO, it makes sense. If you missed Fetch, it really makes sense. It's down 41%. So 41 that's one of the best buys. You know what else? New net. If you think you missed new net and, and we called this very obviously, of course, new net was going to sell off. They're giving people free tokens and some of those people are going to sell those tokens. That's common sense. Common sense. So we knew this was going to happen. So hopefully no one was buying in before the airdrop. Now, what do you know? Well, we know these airdrops are going to occur every quarter. So pre airdrop, if you were a trader and I'm not telling you to be, but if you were, it might make sense to lighten the load pre airdrop and build your stack back up post airdrop. Like, right? Okay. So now is when I would potentially be building a new net position if I didn't have one. But this is a long, long, long term play. They're not even going to have an alpha product out until next year, maybe the end of this year, but probably next year. They're just building a company. So, kind of common sense time, right? You're building this position because many years from now, it may, might pay off. This is a lottery ticket, right? It's a DAP, but it's it's a lottery ticket. But I think they have the right team there to get it done. And then we may all look back and go, yay. Uh, I am very confident in Fetch because of their partnerships. But again, do I do I think the leadership at Fetch is, is mind-blowing? No. And you except for some kind of goofiness on their on their Telegram channel. You don't know, really hear a lot about them, but I know that Fireblocks, where they're very in, entwined with, just got another $550 what, $50 million of investment. I like that, and I like being the only AI play attached to Fireblocks, and that is Fetch. So am I adding? Yes, I am adding Fetch. Okay, uh, Token Bridge permanently changed the token. Um, it, it changes it to a different token, Art Chick. When you use the token bridge, for those of you who don't know, you go from the, the Ethereum fetch token into the Cosmos fetch token. You go across the token bridge. It takes your Ethereum tokens and, and says goodbye, and it gives you the fet, uh, the, the Cosmos fetch, right, that, that you can then stake on Cosmos Station. So there you go, NuNet. Uh, n- yeah, NuNet, uh, NTX. Yes, NuNet, that's right. You nailed it. Okay. So um, the only other thing I'm looking at is looks. Okay, yes, it's down 6% today, but it's up 24% this week. Um, and it's up a quadrillion million percent from the, no, that's not true, but it is up from a very tiny amount. So what they do, this is a vampire attack. They went after OpenSea. Um, they gave the tokens out to people that had done a certain amount of commerce on OpenSea. But what's more important and more interesting, by the way, there's a lot of there's a lot of scammy behavior on on. Um, a lot of malware floating around, a lot of bad behavior on OpenSea. Just real quick uh, uh, kind of discussion. If you have NFTs in a wallet and you have a sell order on OpenSea, okay? So listen to what I'm saying. You're on OpenSea. You have an NFT. Let's say I have this guy. Uh, I don't. I actually did mint three of these in the in the whitelist part. Okay, so I, I have these guys, right? Let's say these three are mine. I list them for sale. And but I don't um, I don't sell them. I move them to another wallet to avoid delisting and paying the fee. If I ever now fast forward two years, these things are worth 50 ETH each. And I had an order out there for half an ETH. I forgot about it. I've been doing a lot of stuff, lots going on. If I ever move that NFT back to that to the same wallet, like the same MetaMask wallet or the Coinbit, whatever. That's that listing is still there. It's active. So you must cancel sell orders. Don't be cheap. And if you do move 
if you do move an NFT that you had a sell order on and you're not sure, cool rule of thumb, bro, don't ever move it back to an exist to a wallet. Matter of fact, what you might do is you might just move all of your NFTs to be safe into a brand new wallet. Yes, it's going to cost you some Ethereum. Wah, wah. You move them to a new wallet and when and, and you just let the old wallet die. Don't use it. Um, this happened to somebody that we know in the Paradise Trippies community. They're, they flip a lot of uh, board apes. They had an existing order for an ape that was worth over 100 Ethereum. They had an existing order out there from from you know, months and months ago for 42 ETH. He moved the, the board ape back and it immediately got sniped for 42 ETH, which is well below the floor, I think of 70 or 80. So he just lost $100,000 because the order wasn't canceled. Now, what that, that specific case is even sketchier because he didn't even have, he went to cancel the order and in the process of canceling, someone else shot a transaction with a higher fee that that jumped in front of his cancellation. So, yeah, pretty sketchy. Now, OpenSea is having to pay for that. But another thing that OpenSea, by the, th these are all things that point me towards Looks Token. The other thing that OpenSea admitted yesterday or a few days ago is that 80% of the NFTs they have are either plagiarized, copies, non-originals, fakes, Eight out of 10, bro. So why on earth would you use OpenSea to purchase, to sell? Forget the fact that on LooksRare, you have the same dexterity, but you get your fees back. They're paying right now in Wrapped Ethereum 290% annualized. So the total is 500%. So to do the math, if you had $1,000 worth of Looks tokens, you're getting as a benefit in um, if you had a thousand bucks each year, right at the current rate, you're getting uh, $2,150 worth of looks tokens and you're getting $2,903 worth of wrapped Ethereum at today's prices. And it's compounding every few seconds. And you say, well, that looks scammy and spammy. It, this is their marketing for their platform, which I believe is way better than uh, OpenSea. And it gives you a lot more dexterity and they're adding new features and it's it's developed by NFT people that get the space. So they're saying, listen, we created a funny money token, but the funny money token shares in the rewards. We'll make our money off the token appreciation. The people using the platform should not be punished with fees. So we will give you back your the Ethereum you spend in the form of wrapped Ethereum in the form, the, the fees. They give you the fees back. Why is that good? Well, it's good for so many reasons. But if you're selling a high price NFT, and I should hope you're also lucky, wouldn't it be cool to get, you know, three, five, ten thousand dollars back in just wasted money that would be lit on fire? I think that's cool. To me, that makes sense. And this platform has a lot of dexterity, and they're learning from all of the missteps at OpenSea. So you have Rarible, Mintable, and a few of these other kind of quagmire platforms. You can go to Nifty Gateway and do some stuff. You're going to get feed out the wazoo. Or you can come to Looks Rare. And even if you don't care about the token, you don't care about the wrapped theorem, you care about nothing else, you just want to transact NFTs, you should transact, meaning to sell your stuff here. And if you're going to buy something, buy it here. Now, obviously, go look at OpenSea. It might make sense if it's a little cheaper there. Looking at the fees, okay, I pay 2% fees, but it's like 5% cheaper, so it makes sense to buy it over there. And then get that sucker listed if you're going to list it and flip it or whatever. If you're going to do selling or buying and you want your fees returned back to you and the fees returned back to you in a token that has been a creative and a, and a, and a scheme that pays you the Ethereum, that gets transacted back and forth in the form of wrapped Ethereum. This makes a lot of sense. So anyway, yeah, there we go. Okay, let's focus. Uh, let's do real quick. Uh, let's talk about Cardano because this is kind of interesting. Um, Cardano developers propose block size increase. Proposal will increase Cardano's block size from 80 kilobytes to the uh, from 280 from the current 72. So this is an 11% increase 
Uh, and, and basically the long and the short of it is it's because of as they introduce these DeFi and these swap platforms and all the other things that they intend to do uh, on Cardano. Because right now on the aggregate, every block is 85 or more percent full. There's a lot of stuff happening on Cardano. I mean, on chain and off chain, lots. It is not reflected in the price, but it is definitely happening. So they're going to do a block size increase. This is good. It's all part of Basho. Okay. So anyway, um, they are, let me see. Um, they are proposing the uh, block size by, um, they are increasing the block size by 11% on Wednesday. Uh, this is the proposal. This happens on the 4th. From what I understand, this goes into effect on the 4th. Okay, so the next parameter uh, update is we continue to increase Cardano network capacity in line with the plan. The proposal will increase the block size by further eight kilobytes from 72 to 80. Uh, and this was from IOHK. This isn't rumor, speculation, whimsy, or fairy dust, or or flim flam, or whatever, whatever you want to call it. Um, what are blocks? Blocks are batches of transactions that are confirmed and recorded on a blockchain. Larger sizes mean more transactions can be included in each batch, but it can affect transaction times and overall network capacity. A separate proposal was additionally triggered to increase the performance of Plutus, the smart contract platform of the Cardano blockchain input output IO said uh, script memory units per transaction or the amount of data that can be included in a single transaction on Cardano would now increase to 14 million from 12.5 million. These changes are expected to improve the performance of applications built on Cardano while increasing overall network capacity. This will also help Sunday swap and some of those other spammy things. The proposals are in line with a broader plan to increase transactional volumes on the Cardano network as it moves toward becoming a decentralized financial focused blockchain. Kind of. Um, what they're doing, they're not saying we're, this is poorly written. They're not saying we're going to become a DeFi platform. They're saying we need to have the bandwidth to accept DeFi dApps, things like that. Okay. So Cardano is not going DeFi. Cardano is focused on um, creating tools that anyone can leverage, whether that's uh, financial identity, digital identity. Um, decentralized finance, quasi-centralized finance, stable coin issuance, land registry, medical recording, what in in central in Africa and Central and South America, and also anywhere else that you want to run cool stuff, you'll be able to do it. Like for instance, Singularity Net and all of the AI, uh, the AI agent system that they're going to build out in this AI marketplace and NuNet and uh, uh, Singularity down, all these things that will be launching uh, on the rails of Cardano. So they need more disc dexterity, and that's what that's what this is. Uh, Sunday Swap, which I'm going to talk a second about Sunday Swap. Uh, it's the first decentralized. That's actually not true. It wasn't really the first, but it's the first to kind of roll out. It went live in January. The DEX offers live is <laughs> questionable. It's, it's liveness is kind of indeterminate right now. The DEX offers several trading pools that consist of native Cardano tokens, such as Sunday, Cardano's ADA, and Metaverse token Pavia, among others. Okay. Um, the tokens, by the way, um, to get them, I don't I don't think you can get them yet, but if you're in certain uh, stake pools, you might they might be giving you some of these. My advice, man, sell these things the second you get them. Um, and what I would do is there's five epics, five. We don't know what the token will do. Now, if this thing goes into the dirt, just take the tokens and bank them. But if this thing's worth even half, even even half of a Cardano, I would just take it as a great staking reward and I would flip it into Cardano ASAP, fast as possible. So what I'm gonna do is the first two epics and half of the second one, whenever they give us these tokens, I'm cutting my total supply of tokens in half that second. I'm converting to Cardano. I'm not waiting. I don't care what Sunday swap or 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 Tuesday swap or pancake. I don't care about any of that crap. I've seen these things fail, right? These things get nuked. It's we already know it's junior code. We already know that Sunday swap was not was such weak ass code. They couldn't launch months ago when they tried to. And that's when when the guy, the team at, at IO said, whoa, 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 whoa. And they pushed, they pumped the brakes and they said, you guys are not ready. This is unaudited BS. You cannot, you cannot list this. You will get nuked. We already know that their upper echelon cannot deal um, in the marketplace with other teams they were working with. What are the other teams? Well, the card, whole card starter thing where they were all yelling at each other, you promised this, you promised that. And, and Charles had to make a statement about it, like, shut up. 
You guys are a bunch of you guys are a bunch of crying crying little bees. Shut up. So we already know this is not likely what the implementation of the future is going to look like. It's just the spammiest first version. So do do I think this is all that exciting? No, I'm selling half of it the first second. But I'm open to the idea that maybe they look like Uniswap a year from now. Maybe they get some good hires. Maybe they do some adjustments. Maybe they fire everyone involved and bring in new people and they go and kind of paper over the bad blood with the card starter people and they find some kind of way to all get along. Yeah, all these things could happen. My aunt could get a sex change and become my uncle. Could. I don't know. So I'm going to sell half. That's me. All right. Um, but anyway, uh, the idea that Cardano is going to increase the block size is good and that they're going to increase the um, the aggregate script memory units per transaction from uh, from 12.5 to 14 million is good because it makes Plutus more effective and efficient. So, yeah, that's cool. Okay, and one last comment, and I'm going to let you guys go because I know we've already kind of run a little bit late. Um, there is a – let me find it. Let me find it. And it might – you know what? It didn't even give me the article. Okay, I'll just tell you what's happening. Uh, Bitwise Asset Management. Um, Bitwise has an ETF proposal. Um, is it here? No, that's the uh, NFL Top Shots. By the way, that's happening too. You can get on the waiting list. Okay, um, so here's what's happening. Um, Bitwise pr- uh, put forth a, a proposal for a um, Bitwise Spot ETF. Uh, so not cash settled, but physically settled, which we, that's what we want in Bitcoin. That's like, that's the big one. Well, the sec didn't just shut them down. So the way it works is you propose a rule change that would allow your product to be uh, unleashed on the market. They have allowed a cash settled product, but not a spot settled product. And their worry is, uh, market manipulation and players cooking the books and, and it just, you know, manipulation is like the big argument. And they're not wrong. There, There is a fair degree of manipulation. It's obvious, right? Like, it, like, look at the people that stole uh, tokens from uh, – was it, was it the Bitfinex hack, which, which may or may not even be related to Bitfinex? It could be a Mark Carpellis type thing where it's like the people involved and that the Bitfinex is a shady group. But whatever. There was a hack from a few years ago, and the tokens, they're all blacklisted. Right, it's like two or three billion dollars worth of tokens. Well, they know they can't spend the tokens. There isn't in, until better mixers come about. They can't spend the tokens every time. People watch the tokens move around. They they blackball them, but they'll move the tokens really fast to try to get a market reaction to, to scare everyone. Oh, they're moving the tokens, and then a bunch of rubes go and sell their Bitcoin. They don't realize that that's all they can do is move their tokens. So anyway. There is some, you know, it's not fraud free. Nothing is fraud free. People are going to always find incentives to do sh- shady stuff, shenaniganery, right? So, what the SEC said, they didn't just they didn't just knock them out of the park. What the SEC said is, we're going to give you, I think it's twenty days, to add uh, more information, prove to us why allowing this rule change would not be unsafe, uh, quell our fears over market manipulation, um, stock price manipulation, and in all of the little kind of innuendo that, that that might suggest. So we'll see. Uh, they didn't just shut them down outright. Now, my guess is that still won't be sufficient. They'll still say no because I think it's going to take legal proceedings. Someone is going to have to bring a suit, and I think it's going to be uh, grayscale. We'll see. But I think Grayscale brings files a suit against the SEC for uh, levying the law in an in, in equal, an unequal way. Um, failed jurisprudence, that kind of thing. Um, I think they will say, how can you have a cash settled product and then change the rules for a spot delivered product? You have spot delivered gold ETFs. It's just as manipulable. I think what the SEC wants to be, they want to be pushed into a corner and they want a judge to come in. The SEC can then say, listen, we, we said no, but the courts say we have to. So here we go. That way it's not on them. And then as, as an ancillary, the SEC can then go to all of their, 
you know, political contacts that, that put people in the various positions they're in and say, it's not my fault, bro. I, I, I said no as long as I could. So they appeased the bankers. They appeased the Elizabeth Warrens. They appeased the, the, the Maxine Waters. They, they appeased the quasi rubes, right? People, people that are not dumb, but maybe ignorant to the realities of crypto and the realities of, of, of Bitcoin in specific. So I think that's the, I think that's what, that's the, that's the game theory that I see. I think the SEC wants to be pushed into court and they want to be told that they're misapplying the law and they're misapplying um, the standard of, of, of whatever you call regulatory jurisprudence or however we describe it. And they want a court to say, you cannot stop this rule change. And then they'll go, it's not us. So we'll see if that plays out. And if, and if that's the case, if I'm right about that, then that means that probably Grayscale, that Bitwise gets nuked, but Grayscale gets a thumbs up. But much smarter people than me have probably worked this out. Anyway, uh, yeah, man. So that's what we got. So a lot of interesting stuff. Nothing um, nothing too shocking, but some kind of cool stuff. Let's go to this guy. I know, he's he's kind of pimp. I can't tell if I like gold. Ah, the gold's cool. He's got the SEC bomb. He's got, he's got the, he's doged out. Anyway, we'll see. A lot of interesting stuff coming. So uh, it's sorry, shut up. Sometimes S I R I just just takes over and just runs with stuff. Um, okay, stay in school. Don't do drugs. Uh, let me see if I missed anybody. Uh, Kangalescu, hello. Uh, Delin Salata. I'm sure that I butchered that, but I gave it a go. Uh, all right. So, yeah. Oh, with the Uzi? Yeah, but that's not an Uzi, my friend. That's an AR. Let's look at it. It's not even an AR. It's an air gun. That ain't an Uzi, bro. XRP or bust. Well, they busted. Um, we will see. Okay. Uh, stay out of trouble. Stay in school. Don't do anything. My poor and solvent drunk. Strong on the meth. Grandmother wouldn't do. As you guys know. That's not very much. She pretty much does everything, smokes everything, snorts, sniffs. She use, like makes a trail of orange glue, like model glue, up to a big old pile of white dust. Who knows what's in it? Maybe it's maybe it's baking powder, but maybe it's not. That's this grandma for you. She, she Grandma do what grandma do. 